This video is sponsored by CI Hub. Hi, I'm Jeff Carlson, and I'm speaking at this year's Creative Pro Week event. We need to talk about the robots that are taking over the world. That's what people think when they hear terms like AI, machine learning, and computational photography. Machines that think for themselves? That take better photos than us humans? Well, we can keep those ideas in the realm of science fiction, because in the real world, in the photo and design worlds especially, artificial intelligence and machine learning are technologies that make your work easier or faster. Here are a couple of quick examples. Let's say you've been asked to clean up a product shot. One of the most time-consuming things in Photoshop is creating selections and masks. But in this case, it's almost ridiculously easy. We want to remove the background and replace it with solid white. So let's choose Select Subject. Now it's done a fine job of selecting the objects themselves, but I can already see a problem. The shadows are not selected. If you look down here by the lens, a small dark bit of shadow is in the selection range, but not the fall off. If I put this against a white background, the items will look like they're floating. So next, let's choose Select, Select and Mask. Okay, first, here's a neat thing. To show that the AI isn't just choosing anything that isn't mostly white, I'm going to grab the Object Selection tool and move it over the items. You can see that it's differentiating each object. If we'd gone straight to Select and Mask, we could have used this tool to drag around the items and get the same current result. But now we just want to add some shadow, so I'll select the Brush tool and set a large, soft brush shape. Then it's a matter of painting the areas where we want that slight shadow to appear. The selection missed a couple of spots on the top box of the, on the right, so we'll select those two. With that done, I'll set the output settings to output to a new layer with layer mask, and then click OK. To add the white background, I'll command click on the Mac or control click on Windows and click the new layer button. And that creates a new empty layer below the current layer. Then I'll set my default colors and switch them so the foreground color is white. To fill it, I'll choose Edit, Fill, and click OK. Now, a lot of AI-based tools are used in photography because the machine learning models can do things like identify objects or people or scenes in the images, but we can take advantage of that in page layout too. InDesign uses Adobe Sensei technology to help in layout. In this example, we have a vertical image, but the shot itself is kind of boring. So I'll select the image using the Direct Selection tool and then choose File, Place. This is a more interesting photo, but its dimensions are all wrong. I could select it, resize it, and so on in a way that I've done thousands of times before. Or I'll select the image, again using the Direct Selection tool, and choose Object, Fitting, Content Aware Fit. Because the software recognized that a person was in the shot, it assumed that was the likeliest subject and not only resized the image, but positioned it so the person is visible in the frame. Those are just a couple of ways AI and machine learning can help you out. I'm going to be showing even more tips like these at this year's Creative Pro Week event, which you can learn about in the description below.